How old is this thing I just found? A question many have asked throughout time, and science has answered with dozens of different ways to date the world around us. Have you heard of carbon dating? You probably have. Well this week we talk about 5 different ways to determine the age of different objects. This is Future 5. Number 1. Thermoluminescence Dating This dating method has practical applications when it comes to rocks and ceramics due to the high heat that needs to be used. When radiocarbon dating is impractical, this method is the next step. The natural crystalline materials contain imperfections. These imperfections lead to local dips in the material's electric potential. When one of these dips happens, it is often referred to as an electron trap, because a free electron may be attached and trapped. The flux of ionizing radiation from both cosmic radiation and natural radioactivity can part electrons from the atoms in the material in question. Most of the electrons will soon recombine with the ionized atoms, however some remain trapped in electron traps, storing a portion of the energy of the radiation in the form of trapped electric charge. Depending on the energy amount needed to release the electrons, one can calculate how far back the electron was stored, up to hundreds of thousands of years. Number 2. Potassium Argon Dating a few dating methods use a similar and very reliable method by measuring the rates at which atoms decay. You know at least one of them, carbon dating. Now potassium argon dating. This particular method is based on the measurement of the radioactive decay of the isotope potassium into argon, which occurs at a stable rate. Potassium is a very common element found in many materials such as clay minerals, tephras, and evaporites. In these types of materials the decay product argon is able to escape the molten rock but as the rocks solidify it starts to slowly accumulate. The time since recrystallization is calculated by measuring the ratio of the amount of argon accumulated to the amount of potassium remaining. The long half-life of potassium allows scientists to calculate the absolute age of samples older than a few thousand years. Number 3. Dendrochronology Dendron chronos, meaning tree limb time. Most everyone has heard of this method, but likely not by its scientific name. Tree ring dating, as it's normally referred to, is an extremely underrated method of determining the age of wood. This method is so accurate, it's capable of determining the time each tree rings were formed to the exact calendar year. This method is most commonly used to calibrate radiocarbon dating and is more accurate than nearly all dating methods when it comes to detail. Number 4. Amino Acid Dating Amino Acid Dating All biological tissues contain amino acids. This dating technique is used in a number of ways but is utilized most recognizably in forensic science. All amino acids except glycine are optically active. What this means is that the amino acid can have two different configurations, known respectively as D and L, which are mirror images of each other. With a few exceptions, living organisms keep their amino acids in the L configuration. When an organism dies, the control over the configuration of the amino acids ceases and the ratio of D to L moves from a value near 0 towards an equilibrium value near 1. This rather confusing process is known as resumization, and when measuring the ratio of D to L in a sample, it enables one to estimate how long ago a specimen died. Number 5. Obsidian Hydration Dating When looking into our ancestors, we often rely on a number of different dating methods to ensure the accuracy of both the fossils and the artifacts that may have been found nearby. Obsidian is a volcanic glass that was often used by prehistoric people as a raw material in manufacturing stone tools such as knives and arrows. Obsidian holds the properties of mineral hydration, meaning it's capable of absorbing water. When obsidian is exposed to air, the rate at which this happens is constant. When obsidian remains untouched and is fractured, there is typically less than 1% water present. Over time, water slowly leaks into the artifact forming a narrow rim. This rim is then measured using a number of different techniques such as high-powered microscopes or infrared photoacoustic spectroscopy. In order for this method to be reliable, 
the conditions of the area where the sample was found as well as its origin must be understood. Oftentimes, carbon dating comes into play here to get a rough estimate of which time period the objects came from. Thank you, yes you, you special person, for watching this week's Future 5. If you enjoyed it, let us know by liking and commenting. And if you want to be kept up to date when new episodes come out, consider subscribing. Good day, a bientôt, tot ziens and auf Wiedersehen.